Learn to love one another. Care for one another. Help one another. And do the thing that God said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. He said, by the way that we show love to one another, then the world will know what? Then you are my disciple. See, as a disciple, you're nothing more than a follower of Christ. Yes. A follower of Christ. Take the time to learn if you don't know what category you are in. What category you are in. No person on earth is qualified to judge and separate the wheat from the tear. At judgment day, only Jesus and his angels will separate the good seed from the bad. But there are four steps to change from tear to wheat. Number one, let your Lord into your heart by opening the doors and receiving him into your life. Yeah. And how do we do that? Romans 10 9 tells us that. <laughs> it said, if you confess with our mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it didn't say you may, you could. It said you shall yes. be saved. Yes. You shall yes. be saved. Amen. Commit your life to him. Psalms 37 says, Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. That means God go all the way with Jesus. Not just on Sunday. Every day, stand in touch with him. Submit, surrender your will and desires to the Lord. In the book of James, folks, 4, 7, and 8. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh near to you. There is a non-biblical adage that goes like this. If you make one step, God will make two. The problem with this approach is that too many people only make one step and go no further. Living for God entails a continual daily walk with Him in order to draw near. But before I go into the last part, I, I want to talk a little bit about some other things. And brothers, I want to talk to us. You notice I said us. <laughs> I'm not just talking to you guys. I'm talking to me guys too. You know, if our society ever hopes to recover what God had in mind regarding living as a human race, something must be done. And what needs to be done, biblical manhood must be revisited. And its spiritual principles must be lived out in our lives. Now that can be lived out in everybody's life, but biblical manhood, brothers, we have to do that. See, we have an awesome responsibility as head of our families and to be the leader in the church as appointed by God. Scripture tells us we were created in God's image, and he loves us. That's the problem. We want to be loved and do 
you not want to love? Don't you, don't you know how or uh, put either we don't want to love or we don't know how to love. Or if we do, we put conditions on it. God loves us unconditionally. Because we put conditions on our love for one another, this is what happens. Conditions brings about expectations. And expectations lead to disappointments. When they are not met, disappointments leads to division or divorce. The role for men and women in a traditional religious family in a lifelong godly marriage relationship which is the foundation of social order and stability. But when that view is abandoned for selfish gain, the society that we live in as we see it today will begin to collapse. Because a man out of place makes a woman displaced. The children's misplaced and God eventually replaced. Did you hear that? A man out of place makes a woman displaced. The children's misplaced. Wow. And God eventually will be replaced yeah. with something else. Yeah. That is where our society is today. All of the problems happen in the home and society is a result of the head not doing what it should. See, being a male is a matter of birth. Being a man is a matter of choice. You notice the difference? A male is because you were born a male. Being a man, you got to choose to be a man. A male can be a dad. But it takes a godly man to be a father. Oh, yes. That's our responsibility. That is our responsibility. See, the devil has attacked the father and spirit in our lives. You know, we got to make up our minds. But we need to look around at our neighbors and say, the devil is alive. Yeah, the devil is alive. We are going to get on one accord with each other and drive the devil out of our homes, out of our For him and his followers at all. Because we can be victorious in our duties. All we have to do is line up with God's purpose for our lives. That means stop doing things our way and start doing them God's way. When God delegates some of his authority, he's expected he expects us to take responsibility. Like the Creator, we must care for our families responsibly and lovingly. God has created lines of authority in order for the world to function. According to 1 Corinthians, the Third verse. Man is 
the spiritual head of the family. God appointed man to be the leader through headship. The line of authority begins with submission. It is often a misused word. But it is the key element in the functioning of any family, worship or marriage. We must understand submission is not surrender or withdrawal, nor does it mean interiority. God created all people in his image, and all have equal submission. It is a mutual commitment and cooperation in a marriage. Both husband and wife are called to submit to each other. Submit to each other. But let me tell you, if we as brothers would treat our wives as God treats the church, that love and care for them and willing to die for them and take care of them, what woman would not submit? What woman will not submit? Sex is not better. No one sex is better than the other. We must not let the issue of authority and submission become a wedge to, the, to destroy oneness in our worship, our marriage. Instead, we should use our unique gifts to strengthen our marriage and glorify God. Amen. Now we have Man in the leadership role in the smallest unit of society. And that's the family. It was God's idea to establish this plan for social order. And it places on man's shoulder the obligation of leadership Along with leadership roles comes responsibility. You cannot be a leader without having the responsibility. Genesis 3.16 says, We are told that man is the rule, is to rule over the woman. Not a woman, don't get upset. This means not dominion in the sense of authoritarian or dictatorial rule, but in the sense of providing care and protection. And, and God himself said, if you don't believe it, read it for yourself. He said, I will create, multiply the sorrow and thy conceptions in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over you. Now the thing about it, that submission don't mean that you are under his thumb, under his feet, under nothing. You are beside him. You are standing right beside him, and you are being submission to each other. Ephesians 5.23 said, Husband is the head of the wife as Christ is head of the church and is the savior of the body, protector of the body. 1 Timothy 5 and 8 tells us, If we fail to provide for one's family, it's equal to denial of a faith which is worse than an infidel. In other words, if you don't provide for your family in a proper way, you are worse than an unbeliever. As Jesus was responsible to provide for the welfare of the church, so the husband is responsible to protect his wife. The marital 
responsibilities of the husband is to love our wives as Christ loved the church, willing to give ourselves for her. Love is not just saying you love, you must demonstrate it. The husband's authority is based on servanthood. Servanthood. The worth of a man is not defined by how much he acquires, but by how much he gives away. True greatness of a man is found in his capacity to share himself without any thought 